was um, 17, I started drinking. And I liked to party, I smoked, all that kind of stuff. And one time, one of my friends, her name was Sharon, she called me up and she said, Claire, do you want to go to Spain? Because uh, there was this free trip to Spain. And she told me that there was going to be uh, a group of people that were going to She said, all the people that are going to go to Spain are going to meet up in this house next week. I said that I would go, that I was going to go to Spain, and I thought we were going to go to Spain to party. That's what I thought. I thought we were going to a place called Ibiza. She didn't say that to me, but that's what I thought in my head. That we were going to go there, we were going to party, we were going to drink, all that kind of stuff. A few weeks before the trip, everything was booked and arranged, and a few weeks before, um, my appendix perforated, helping my mommy put up curtains. Wasn't able to go, obviously, I was in recovery. So um, I decided, you know, one of them approached me and said, would you like anyone to go in your place? So the first person that came to mind was Claire. She thought it was party, party, party. My mom is not here, my dad is not here. We went to Ireland to meet with a group of people from Derry who were going to come down to our Holy Week retreat. It was during this meeting in Derry with us that she realized that it was a pilgrimage, not a tourist trip to Spain. You opened the door and there was this group of people, and about 20, 30 people, they were 40, 50, 60 years old, all sitting there with rosaries. Are you all going to Spain? And they say, yeah, we're going to the pilgrimage. I said, you're going to what? <laughs> Let's just say she came a little reluctantly. Now looking back in hindsight, was not a was not a coincidence, it was definitely a God incident. Uh, this was a last minute replacement. In the home of the mother, we usually have what we call a Holy Week encounter. That year, we got together in Priego, Spain, and a small group of young girls came from Ireland. One of them was Claire Crockett, a very lively girl very energetic and very sure of herself. Rambunctious, very rowdy. She loved to make others laugh, but she didn't like to think. <laughs> I looked out the window and I saw Claire Crockett there, sunbathing, and it wasn't even hot. But I do remember how the first impression that you might have had of her, of being superficial, wasn't authentic. Rather, she was a person that truly sought the truth. Whenever Father Rafael would speak, she was completely receptive. She was really listening. Good Friday came, and uh, they said, Claire, you have to go. Today's Good Friday. Our Lord died for us. You have to go. So I went in. I said, fine. I sat on the back bench of the church, and they said, Claire, you have to get up and kiss the cross. You know, everybody's doing it. Get up. I said, kiss the cross. Get up. Get up. Get up. So I got up because everybody else was doing it, and I remember standing in line. I went up and as I went to kiss the feet of our Lord, I remember looking at him and in that moment I just felt the mercy of God and I saw that it was my sins that nailed our Lord to the cross. No, no one had ever told me that, but looking at our Lord on the cross, I just saw that there were my sins that nailed him to the cross and I just started crying and crying. For my drunkenness, for my impurity, for my for my vanity, for everything, I seen him nailed in the cross for that. That these were the nails that I nailed him to the cross. It was my fault. And seeing this, and seeing the love that he had for me, that dying on the cross for me, I was like, I have to change. I can't go on loving the way I'm loving. I went up to her and I asked her how she was doing. She looked at me and she responded, "He loves me. He died for me." Then I asked her, "Are you okay?" And she kept repeating that over and over again. So I asked her if she wanted to speak with Father Raphael, and she said yes. 